Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a really fun video on testing out some Pinterest DIY Halloween treats. So I found some of the recipes that had been sitting on my Pinterest board since like last year and I decided I was going to try them out and let you know if they were actually as easy to make as they looked. Now the twist is I didn't use a recipe. I went strictly off the picture to see if I could recreate the treat minus the recipe. So it was interesting, let me tell you, but it turned out better than I expected. There was one fail though, and it was actually quite hilarious. So yeah, if this is your first time here, what's up and welcome, my name is Kate, and I would love for you guys to join my YouTube family. Click subscribe down below, and also, I would love for you guys to turn on post notifications. I'm doing something new where I'm doing a shout out in every single video at the end of the video, shouting out one of you guys who has my notifications turned on. So make sure you click the bell, and then from the drop down menu, select all notifications, and then just send me a screenshot to Instagram or Twitter and I will shout you guys out in the next video. So some of these might be some good inspo for you if you have a Halloween party coming up that you're going to and you wanna bring something fun and spooky. Um, so yeah, if you wanna see how they all worked out for me, then just keep watching. Alrighty, you guys, on the left we have the gorgeous Pinterest picture that we are trying to recreate today. So I went out and bought all of the same things hoping that I could slay this and make it look exactly like the Pinterest photo. So we've got our ingredients here. I'm taking a microwave safe bowl and putting some of these chocolate chips in. And I'm going to be microwaving these in 30 second increments so we don't burn the chocolate. I've done that so many times before and it's incredibly frustrating. So doing it in small increments like that just kind of maximizes your chances for success. So next we're going to grab a piece of wax paper. Um, later you'll see that I kind of messed up and didn't put it on a cookie sheet. It wasn't like the end of the world but I would definitely do that now so putting that out and we're just gonna be stirring up the chocolate so this was the first 30 seconds it didn't do a whole lot but I just kind of mixed them up to get them all melty and looking good for the next 30 seconds I forgot to show you a key ingredient. I got these cute little eyeball candies at Michael's and that was like one of the main things in the picture that I thought was so cute. So anyway, I'm just stirring around the chocolate every 30 seconds. I think I did it a minute 30 total. So this was right at about a minute. While I'm microwaving the chocolate for the last 30 seconds, I am just opening up the candy and I like way overshot what I needed. So keep that in mind. If you're just gonna be making one little pan of this, you don't need a whole ton. So I've just got my Kit Kat bars, my Reese's, my candy corn, and I'm cutting the Reese's into quarters. So here is the chocolate in all of its melty glory, you guys. The next shot when I'm pouring it out. That could be like in a satisfying video compilation, okay? Look at that. I probably should have put it in slow-mo, but here you go. Melty chocolate, putting it onto the wax paper to spread it out. Are you hungry yet? How good does this look? I was just being a little ratchet and spreading it out with a plastic spoon because I'm just a heathen like that and I don't have any nice silverware. So I'm just spreading this out across the wax paper into kind of a rectangle shape. So this is like kind of the best I came up with. You wanna make sure it's thick, but not like too thick. Um, in the picture, they cut it really cute. I ended up trying to do that off camera. I didn't show it. I don't know why. I guess I just kind of forgot to cut it, but it didn't end up cutting the way it looked so perfectly on Pinterest. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, moving on to the fun decorations. I'm just placing these around and with the eyes. I thought it was so cute in the picture how they put two next to each other. So it kind of looked like little ghost eyes or a little creepy creepy crawly ghouly kind of Halloweeny things so anyway um, just spread this around and make it look real cute just make sure the colors are you know nice and and spread out the Kit Kats I would actually probably put those down first because I started running out of room to place those down I'm putting mine on the cookie sheet now and sliding that into the fridge for I think it was about 20 minutes before it hardened up and here's the final result look how cute I think I nailed it all right, next up we have brain cupcakes. This one, I mean, I know I said I wasn't using a recipe. I had, had a picture to go off of with some steps, but uh, we're gonna just do this. So I am doing some cake mix funfetti, of course. Just had to, why not? So anyway, water, eggs, 
Um, I also heard that using butter instead of oil makes it taste like a nicer cake. So I figured since this was like a whole experiment and a half, this would be the perfect time to try it. I'd never done it before. And I would say that it really didn't make that big of a difference. So I don't know. I've heard that's a way to spice up boxed cake mixes and make them taste more like, I don't know, like you bought it somewhere, but I, I don't know. The jury's still out for me. What do you guys think? So now I'm just placing these into the little cupcake tins. I ended up making some big ones and some mini ones, truthfully, because I just ran out of cupcake liners for the bigger size, but it was cute to kind of have a variation of sizes. So that really was the easy part. I'm popping them in the oven now and then letting them cool. Now we're gonna be working on our buttercream frosting. Didn't use a recipe for this either, thank you so much. Um, I just used room temperature butter and started putting some powdered sugar in there and like mixing them together until it was combined and then I added some more sugar and then I added some almond milk. So I just kind of did that until I got the right texture. I didn't measure anything at all. So I also used some kind of bright pink. It's like kind of corally, and I feel like it was just the perfect color for these cupcakes. So I did color the frosting once it was all kind of mixed together. And then I'm adding a little base layer onto the cupcakes because I figured if I started doing the whole brain situation before this, you'd be able to see the cupcake through. So I did one like thin little layer of pink icing. And then I put the rest of the icing into a piping bag. You could actually just use a regular plastic bag for this too. Um, and now I have the picture next to me for a reference and I'm trying to pipe on a brain design. I think if I had to do this over again, I would open the bag up a little bit more where the icing was coming out because my lines were just a little bit thinner than the ones on Pinterest and I liked their picture better than the way mine turned out. So also take your time. When I was rushing, it just kind of ended up looking like a glob and wasn't so cute. But I think it worked out great on both sizes of cupcakes, maybe even a little bit better on the smaller one, but I don't know. Just totally personal preference. I think these turned out pretty good. If I was signed up to bring these to a party, I definitely would not be embarrassed to bring them. Okay, so the next one, I thought it just really couldn't be easier, right? So I got a couple Granny Smith apples. I got some Ghirardelli caramel flavored chips. You know, we so bougie like that. And I've got a little melon baller. I have never done a melon baller in an apple before. So the first one turned out perfect but all of the other ones after that were not perfect circles. So unless you wanted to be incredibly wasteful and like waste more than half of the apple just to get perfect circles, they're just not gonna look as aesthetically pleasing as the Pinterest picture. So that, that is my discovery here. So I got them as good as I could get, but they all kind of had little gouges out of them. So anyway, I just got as many little apple balls as I could get. <laughs> And then I moved on to the caramel chips. I'm just gonna be melting this the same way that I melted the chocolate earlier in the video, just in 30 second increments, even though it's caramel, just do it the same way. They melted down just fine. Um, these were interesting. I don't think they have like all the caramel color and like probably the nasty ingredients you don't wanna eat anyway, but it was kind of weird having like a really light tannish brown color caramel. I don't know, it kind of like mentally messed with me a little bit, but. I don't know, I didn't actually check the label to see if it had caramel color or not, but it was just a different color, so. Um, now I'm just using a toothpick because I couldn't find those little lollipop sticks at Target where I was shopping, so I just used toothpicks. And just kind of swirled them around, and this actually was pretty easy. Um, I think the picture, some of them had sprinkles on the bottom, so if you wanna be all fancy and do that, that would be the time to do it before you set it down onto the plate. But these actually tasted amazing and they turned out looking kind of cute. I think they would have looked a little better had I melted the caramel down more, but I was kind of getting nervous the more I heated it because I didn't want it to do that chunky burning thing and then all of them would have looked chunky. So I just stopped at a minute 30, but I think maybe if I went 30 seconds more, the caramel would have been smoother. So anyway, just food for thought, but I think they turned out great. They tasted amazing and they were like cute-ish.
All right, so the last project we're trying is the easy recipe. It says screaming pretzels. So I was pretty stoked about this. I love chocolate covered pretzels. Everything is pretty self-explanatory considering the previous parts of the video that you have watched. We're getting the chocolate nice and melty. Once you have it like this, you're gonna dunk your pretzels. And here is the part where you see why I'm a YouTuber and I'm not a chocolatier. This turned into such a hot mess. I think I got the wrong size pretzels. I was getting too much chocolate on them. It was just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what was happening here. They just, they looked terrifying. So if you want something to truly look terrifying, follow what I'm doing here because they won't look cute. Uh, you'll probably be the star of the party because everyone will be talking about your horrible Pinterest fail. <laughs> so for this one, I just tried dunking the front because the whole key is to like get the eye part covered but the mouth part open so it looks like it's screaming and it just wasn't happening for me no matter what I tried. So. Uh, yeah, I just, I decided that we were going to go for taste instead of aesthetic at this point. So I wasn't too concerned. I was just trying to get the eyeballs on there. At one point I decided, hey, let's make one with three eyes. Why not? So, uh, I think if you do this, maybe get the small size pretzel. I think that probably is the key. So here's what we came up with, but, uh, Pinterest definitely won on this one. So that is the end of this video. Today's shout out goes to Jen Lynn 24 Thank you so much for turning on my post notifications and watching my videos. If you want a chance to be shouted out in a future video, just make sure you screenshot your post notifications being on and send it to me on Twitter or Instagram. What was your favorite DIY in this video? Let me know. Have you tried any of these? I want to know. Hit me up in the comments and I'm excited to say that I'll be seeing you guys again tomorrow.